Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser currently here in Vancouver, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup, Jordy. All the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising. That's the sort of thing that you might find interesting. Please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. And this week I'm back aboard Geordie and back to work on the upstairs helm, which I know some of you are going to appreciate. But not before getting some work done on MV Zephyrus in her new shed, and uh, that went really, really well as well. Anyway, let's jump back in time and see how close we can get to catching back up to where we are today. And a big, huge thank you to my Patreon and PayPal supporters uh, for keeping the show going. Thanks ever so much. Cheers. Let's get on with it. Well, yes, indeed, the secret is out. <laughs> We've got ourselves a shed. Well, to be fair, Lady Zephyrus has got herself a shed, and it's going to be a game changer for maintenance and uh, various storage issues, <laughs> uh, as you can see. And uh, looking after all three boats, uh, this will be the winter home for Poem, uh, which will fit in here perfectly. And in terms of fitting, uh, to be perfectly fair, the shed isn't quite long enough for Zephyrus and uh, Jordy just yet, uh, but we're gonna deal with that um, through an ambitious extension, uh, which uh, we won't do this year, probably, probably next year. Anyway, it's just so amazing to be able to work indoors um, and having put Poem in a shed, a rental shed that really didn't work out very well, um, it'll be fantastic to be able to bring her in here uh, after uh, Zephyrus goes back to um, Victoria for the winter. Let's get some work done. Earlier in the cruise, I pointed out that we were going to try and do some maintenance to the cabin sides of Zephyrus this summer. But like everything about this year, it wasn't really all that dry and there wasn't that much opportunity and it became more apparent that there might be a shed coming. So we put it off till now. And it, there's going to be a lot to do um, because the cabin sides are in pretty rough shape but all easily repairable at uh, at one time i mentioned i was going to dig these all out and put some filler in his and that but the damage is significant enough that i'm going to actually spline all these uh, bad joints here and um, with a quarter inch mahogany spline uh, routed out an epoxy in a spline and then ferret smooth and I think that is a much better repair and in areas like this I'm going to route out a large block and put a Dutchman in there so that that is all wood and then ferret smooth again again because the cabin sides are painted on this boat we have you know some flexibility um, but I also believe it might have been part of the demise but eh, it's hard to say fresh water is evil on boats Definitely some mess in here and there's nothing to be done but poke it all out and uh, replace it. I'd rather not go all the way through. <laughs> I'm going to route this in a bit but I just want to get an idea of the uh, severity of the situation. Hmm. Severe. So this nylon anchor road is just a perfect elastic band to run all the way around the boat just under the gunnel and so I can wrap a tarp over that and over the dock so I can be sure we don't get any chips in the water. All right well this is a mess but before I can put a rotor in here I have to make sure I find any fasteners because you wouldn't want to hit a fastener with the rotor and here's a nail right here holding this piece of molding on. So I'm gonna to have to try and pull that out. Um, hopefully I can pull it through in this direction so as not to mar this surface too much. Although gosh knows how much of this I'm gonna to have to dig away to be able to do a proper repair here. So that pulled that through nicely without too much of a mess. In fact, <laughs> didn't even make a hole. Mild steel nails. Mild steel in a boat. Yes. Beauty. 
Okay, I'm gonna start cutting, at least in this place, with the piece, with the bit I'm gonna use for splining, which is a quarter inch straight bit. And I've set it slightly less than an inch and a half deep. The idea being, I'm gonna do all the routing basically on blocks. In other words, support piece of this strapping, which is three quarters of an inch thick. And I wanna go slightly less than three quarters of an inch into the cabin sides. The, of course, cabin sides are an inch thick, so that leaves me a, uh, a quarter remaining. Now, in this case, I need to do it because there's an awful lot of damaged wood here. In the splining, I want the spline as deep as feasible so that the new glued epoxied spline is structurally most of the side of the boat. I don't want to just put a little shallow one in that looks nice because it won't be strong enough because it won't be deep enough. Anyway, so what I'm going to do here is just start to poke around. When you're using a mini router like this with a small base, you have to be careful you don't start with too large an area because after a while you've got nothing for this to sit on. That's partly mitigated by me having this little support piece to work on. Okay, let's see what I can tidy up here. Again, I'm going to set the speed pretty high because it's a small bit and because I'm basically freehanding, I don't want it to, to grab. So the faster it goes, the smaller the motions I can take and it'll take off lots of small bites. Well, it's actually going pretty nicely. Uh, at three quarters inch deep, I am into solid wood, which makes me very, very happy. Nice little love bite there. I felt bad about that one already, but all right. Anyway, I'll tie this up a little bit and that is a pretty nice little pocket for a Dutchman. Ah! Okay, joints like this, which aren't really, really bad, but someone has previously put some kind of goop in here um, and goop just doesn't cut it. So I'm going to probably just do a single pass with the router and not bother um, actually with a spline, just basically filling that. This has just got 291 or 5200 or something. There we go, I'll just run the router through that and that'll be nice and clean. And on to the first seam to actually spline. First off, I'll have to take this marker lamp off. Now the reason I can use a plain piece of wood here as a guide is because I'm actually cutting a quarter inch slot. The neat thing about a quarter inch straight router bit is that it's a quarter inch shaft. So this acts as an automatic bearing for me or guide. It's kind of a hack, but it works really, really well. You just have to make sure that the bit is sticking out of the router far enough that some of the smooth part of the shaft here is riding on the wood. The downside to that is I can't take successive cuts. In other words, I can't, uh, you know, bring the bit into the router very far so that I can take successive cuts because at that point the shank, the smooth part of the shank is not exposed. So I just have to be a little bit careful with my cuts. There we go, that worked out nice and neat. Well, more nastiness. This is all unhappy here. Nice. Punch hole in your freaking thumb with the yeah. Not terrifically elegant, but very effective is these little uh, rock bits. They'll do a just a, there we go. at least to you know dig out all the real uh, soft stuff and get an idea of what's going on. Uh. <laughs> yeah. This is just all body filler. Uh. 
All right, well, it is very tempting to get caught up in ship fitters disease in here. There is obviously a lot of trouble in here from chronic water getting in. It's been repaired up top and well, this is all fiberglass, but it sounds a little loose there, but it's not leaking. Um, so I, I was tempted to take this corner piece of trim off and start to dig at this, but it's just not um, possible right now to do this right. Um, the best I can do is get it dry, soak it with CPES, and uh, and basically defer major woodwork in here for a couple of years. Um, but wow. And here I was trying not to get ship fitters. I was just cleaning the dust uh, out of this seam and it is seriously rotten here. Well, there's a pretty, you can see from this mess here, there's a big water problem here. Uh, this all has to be redone. In fact, this entire aft bulkhead to the cat and the wheelhouse, you can see is all just held together with goop. I mean, this is absolute rubbish. And in fact, that's one of the reasons um, Lady Zephyrus I uh, got herself a shed because this is this fall's project. I'm going to come back up here in the fall after we've moved back downtown and replace this bulkhead. Big job, too big to do outside anywhere. So I'm just trying to figure out how much of this to do now and how much of the... Uh, yeah. Okay then, starboard side. More mess. Uh, yeah. Including some deck joint issues here and a patch of goo here that I think it's time to deal with. Yuck. Yuck, yuck. Yuck, yuck. How about this up here? What's this look like? Yeah, it's just all oh, rotten, 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 rotten. I think this calls for the rotary rasp. I don't know if there's any harm screwing on the guides. It's clear there's going to be lots of repairs going on here. <laughs> and again here, some real drama. And all I can really do, as I said here, is buy some time because this is all going to need to be rebuilt in wood. Um, I should say that Jordy has the same problem. In fact, it's already been patched here um, and I'm hoping to rebuild it all properly someday. <laughs> someday. All right, okay, 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 okay. You don't wanna watch this. So a uh, dozen or so times since last night, I've gone over the whole boat, the heat gun drying out all these areas that were a little bit suspect for dampness and they're super nice and dry now. Um, so now I'm gonna run around with uh, CPES, which is clear penetrating epoxy sealant, basically a very, very thin epoxy that will go in and uh, seal up uh, some of the areas and provide a better adhesion for the subsequent epoxy uh, that will go in after. Wasn't able to find my CPES, but I did find a jug of Git Rot, which is pretty much the same thing. It may have some other, yeah, whatever. Uh, again, I'm not endorsing any of these products. I actually find Git Rot to be a bit thick, uh, but it'll certainly do the job. So I'm gonna just uh, apply it in here liberally, everywhere. I think it might be useful. And as I said before, this is really just buying a little time. All of this is going to have to be replaced. All right then, so as the CPS starts to um, set up, I'll start to cut up the uh, Dutchman's for here. I haven't quite got a bench in here yet, but that's going to be soon. For stub, looks like it's going to be pretty close. I could have been done a little better here. I just need to ease the edges a bit with my handy dandy stationary belt sander. And 
Oh, that fits quite well. Anyway, yeah, I could have done a little better there. Um, no, what it is now is a little proud. In fact, it's incredibly uniform. Um, this piece, of course, is three quarters of an inch, and I had actually set the router for uh, about five eighths uh, to give myself a little working room, so I'll just have to sand the back of that off a little bit, and it'll be nice. And there we go. Did a little bit of contouring on this edge, too, because I can tell you this is easier to sand uh, on the stationary belt sander than in place, but that's going to be a fine Dutchman except for that. Oh, yeah. Now that's a little better. Fits quite nice. <laughs> I'm not sure I can get it back out. There we go. Nice thing about the stationary belt sander is I can put a little curve in here. Nice, 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 nice. Just gonna put a little chamfer on uh, one edge of all the splines so that when I shove them in, they uh, go in nice and easy. Uh, let's see if we can get some of these splines installed. Hit up some thickened epoxy. Every time I say that, I think of Mads from Sail Life. So now with the epoxy cured, I can trim down the splines to something manageable for sanding. I am really pleased with the way these two turned out better than the one on the other side, which I'll show you in a minute. Anyway, uh, nicely, nicely set in. I'll sand these up a bit and then some fairing and then... Uh, we can tidy this up. Really dealing with this molding, which is actually in pretty bad shape, is, is a lot of the work because you're sort of hand sanding all that. Anyway, it's, it's, it's all part of the process. Well, hello all. We're uh, coming to you today from Vancouver at Callister Brewing. I had to look because I couldn't really remember where it was. One of those fabulous little micro brewery, co-op brewery. Tell them. It was a co-op. It was a co-op. But now it's just one. Just one. And it's splendid. In it's in a district of Vancouver that I don't know anything about. It's East Van. Or Yeast Van. <laughs> if you're down with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that. Down with the kids. Mm. All right. I now consider myself down with the kids. Here we are in Yeast Van enjoying a yeasty beverage. Um, I'm going to jump straight into this because this is a bit controversial. I love a hazy IPA, as I think you all know. Owen is English. I sure am. <laughs> so I think just naturally, I think this will be the first hazy IPA he's had in this country. Pretty much? Uh, probably. Yeah. Looks exactly. revolting. Looks revolting. And yeah. So basically, hazy is what? Unfinished beer. Uh, it's lazy, I would say. Hazy lazy, is hazy. Lazy. Right, okay. Do you remember what it's actually called? Hazy Boy. Hazy Boy from Callister Brewing. I'm bound to like it. I think Lloyd likes it enough. No, no, right. No. In other words, you're, you're happy to drink I'll, along. I'll, I'll break with you. Exactly. With you. All right, gentlemen. So good to be here. Cheers. All eyes on you, Owen. Um, it tastes fine now. I just yeah. think I might be a little bit liquid in the morning. <laughs> okay. So it's not the flavor, it's what it's going to do to you that's yeah, the problem. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I totally get it. All right. I like it. Oh, With just a little citrus? A little citrus. A little bit of that hazy tang. It's quite it's chewy. chewy. It's <laughs> chewy. <laughs> the main, most hazies have too much citrus. This is yeah, just about the right this amount. This is about right. I actually really, really, really like, like this. Okay. okay. So uh, I'm looking at the wall again to let you all know. Callister Brewing Company. I'm just going to give you... No, I'm not panning you over because I won't be able to bring you back to the right spot. Anyway. I think it's absolutely fantastic and we've been out a couple of nights in a row to a couple more of these similar places and there's lots of good micros. I mean, what did you say, 30? I think there's about 30. Least, there's at least 20. All right in here. Anyway, and there's about six within two minute walk. Two minute walk of here and uh, we've, we, uh, we've been to several of them. It's been good. It's been so fun to be in Vancouver with you guys. Yeah. Really, I came over originally to help Lloyd a little bit with his van or really a little just camaraderie. 
uh, with some of the stuff and uh, I, I don't know if I showed you any of that or maybe next week I, I have no idea what this week will be because I haven't even started editing yeah. but yeah. it's been great Owen has joined us too for a for a bunch of our drinking drinking yeah. <laughs> and out and, and some about eating. Some yeah, eating. Right. Some it's eating. been a heat wave the whole time yeah. we've been here oh, yeah. so sure. cold beer has been a good part of that excellent well again cheers gentlemen so great to be with you and there's a surprise coming because normally I would now go and the word of the week is am I gonna run with this no word of the week no, no word more of week. word of the week because it's stupid no it's not it's just it's maybe it's irrelevant maybe you can all imagine why I started the word of the week was intended to encourage people to comment to encourage people to build community but these two yeah, figured out yesterday that it doesn't actually provide comments that really build community. It, it people, you all come up with a sentence with the word in it, but there's no real reason to comment on those comments, is there? It doesn't build the conversation, and I, I, I didn't really think about it that way until yesterday. So, but I still want to give away a T-shirt. So, not only did they discover the problem, they came up with a solution. The most commented upon or active comment gets the t-shirt. The one with the most responses. Most responses. Most, most interactions. No, it's the most dynamic, the most community building, comment. Building comment. Yeah, exactly. So if, if you'd like to win a Charles Majority t-shirt, I think the new the new line now is say something Say something interesting. Interesting and compelling and ask a question. Ask a that question that builds the, the community. Dialogue or, or and and comment. you know, I'm I'm actually quite amazed that I, I didn't see this a long time ago and you've all been very kind not to point it out to me because <laughs> these two were quick to do it okay enough said put a comment down below that will generate a lot of comments to it the poets. what's that the poets. and the poets well of course we've had several significant poets that have been absolutely wonderful all this time uh, with the word of the week and I would please love you to continue uh, with your poetry because it's it's honestly it's a big part of me reading the comments I scroll through until I come to them so please carry on with the poetry and uh, maybe you can phrase a question that promotes a lot of conversation in a poem I, uh, I'm just making it too hard now right an inquisitive haiku. an inquisitive haiku Excellent. This has gone on forever. I think you know what you're trying to do. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. See you next week. Cheers.